You're so stupid. You're fat. You're a loser. You're fake. You are garbage. You are worthless. Everyone you like hates you. You are a bad mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate you. Monica's with us now. Good morning. Hi, Savannah. It's hard to watch that. Honestly, it, it, it's very impactful when you see and you know that we all have that voice in our head. What made you want to address this kind of bullying? And frankly, that is what it is. It is, it is. Self-bullying is bullying. Um, this year's campaign was actually really personal for me. So I had an experience about 10 years ago or so where I had taken these like course seminar things and anonymously and um, they had us do an exercise where they put us into these groups of three, told us to sit down and write out all the things that our negative voice says to us. So that was very easy for me, mm -hmm. you know, page after page after page. Um, but the real kicker of it was that they then made us read our list out loud to the other people in the group. Mm -hmm. And in the course of hearing myself say these things out loud, I realized in a whole other way how cruel I am to myself or was being and that I would never say those things to someone else. So, and that's the genesis of this of this PSA. Yes. It's so powerful because not only are they saying out loud mm -hmm. the terrible things they say to themselves, they're directing it at another person. And these were not actors no. and they were not following a script. Yeah, no, this was n n unscripted, unscripted and they came So what in. did you tell Sorry. people? Yeah. Yeah, so it was um what we ended up doing was we had, uh, it was kind of very similar to the exercise yeah. that I had gone through. And so in terms of having people send us the night before their list of terrible things, they had no idea they were gonna have to read them on camera. They were asked to bring a loved one who might be willing to go on camera as well. And so then we asked them to read their list on camera to a loved one mm -hmm. and they were so brave. And um, really what was amazing is not one person said, oh, I'm out of here. You know, everybody participated. So I think it's, a, it's such a universal topic when you really stop to think about it. It really is because I think every single person watching has some version of this inside their own head. I certainly do. You know, <laughs> Me too. Do. In yes. the makeup chair this morning, you yeah. know. Oh, uh, every <laughs> single day. And so, uh, but it's it's hard because it's so automatic. Mm -hmm. To me, it feels like it's almost like breathing. Yeah. This constant narrative. <laughs> Wait, so how do you get control of those yeah. kinds of thoughts? Well, it, it is. I mean, exactly as you say, I think for me and what I found is, you know, first of all, we have to recognize the likelihood we're gonna eradicate the negative voice in our head is not very high, but it really, you can curb it. I have worked on this for a very long time and my therapist works on it with me a lot. And I have found that, you know, really it's sort of about catching yourself and course correcting. Mm -hmm. And whether that course correcting is um, to something positive, and if you can't do that, then try going neutral. You told me a story about you were in your house or a bunch yes. of unpack boxes around. Oh my around. gosh. And right. I mean, this is actually a really interesting example of how we can shift our thinking just the tiniest bit. Exactly. So, I mean, it may sound a little um, hokey to some, but I had boxes unpacked and there was stuff everywhere and I tripped and totally fell, not like caught myself, totally fell. And I noticed that my reaction, the thoughts in my head were, oh, thank God I didn't hurt myself instead of, you know, you effing idiot, <laughs> like you klutz, you know, of course you fell. And that was a big, that was a big shift for me, even though it's small. And, and I think part of what can be really important with this is actually the witnessing part, the noticing. Yeah. And, and that's the first step with all of it is just becoming mindful of how often we say these things. Absolutely. You just had a big milestone birthday. Welcome to the 50s club. <laughs> Thank you. You wrote something on, I think it was on Instagram. You said this past decade has been your best decade. Yeah. Can you imagine, imagine that the post you would have written at 40. Could you have ever imagined oh how gosh. this last 10 years no. would have kind of changed everything for you? Would you agree? I, oh, a thousand percent. It has been 
the best decade for me. I'm incredibly grateful. I um, you know turning 40 was horrible and turning 50 was um, very empowering. Hmm. So it was, I had a moment, I did a lot of personal work, just um, seeing out the old decade, what do I want for the new one? And found myself in the car waiting for something and um, just started to go through mentally all of the things that had happened this last decade. And I was so I was so overwhelmed with gratitude in that, you know, people see me for my true self now, that I have been able to find a purpose to my past, um, I, that my narrative has been, I think, revisited, and I was able to reclaim it in large part from, from younger generations. We've talked about this before, but I'm always so struck by that for you to do that, for you to have had this last 10 years and reclaim your narrative, it required you to become public again, the very yeah. thing that was most painful to you. Yes, it is. Um, it was it was terrifying. I mean, and I find I find doing this hard. <laughs> it's not natural for me, um, but it, it was, you know, it's a long journey from uh, 98. It's been 25 years now. And um, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm really grateful for where things are now. Well, you have found this purpose and passion. You're about to be honored for it. I have to say, you're going to get an award from the Hetrick Martin Institute at the Emory Award for your anti-bullying work. And real quick, you're a writer and a producer. Yes. So do you, I, the writer strike is over. Thank God. Can you give me any hint? You got, got anything you're, you're cooking up or working on? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I wish it were announced already, but I'm executive producing a limited series uh, that's on another young woman who found her life decimated and ripped apart on the world stage, but she somehow managed to survive. And um, I think it's going to be really powerful and hopefully they'll announce it soon. Well, you're an amazing messenger for, for many, many causes. And we so appreciate having you, Monica. Thank you, Thank Samantha. You. And if you want more on the new PSA and Monica's own experience with self-bullying, we've got a lot more about all of this at today.com. If you or someone you know ever needs help, you can reach the National Crisis Hotline by calling or texting 988. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.